Nemo Radio is on the air. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C. Closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! Now I want to stop the screen share. I want to get into some lessons, okay? So let's get into some lessons today. And I want to start with really understanding what goes into engaging audio. So whether you're doing podcast episodes, audio books, there is a method to the madness that goes into this. And I want to dive into that here in this first video. So I'm going to hop off camera here for a second behind the keyboard, share this lesson with you. And then I'll still be live in the chat as well as we dive in now to the what I call the real indispensable elements of engaging audio. So here we go. All right. All right. Now it's time to dive into one of my favorite forms of content marketing, audio. Oh man, I love audio. (laughs) Can you tell? Can you tell listening to me talk how much I love audio? And in particular, I really have come to enjoy and seen a lot of benefit from podcasting. Perfect example, I had a guy just today email me. He's in the middle of Australia, mate, right? He's driving across the country of Australia for five hours. Guess what he did for that five-hour drive? He binge listened to several episodes of my Nemo radio podcast. Like, how, how is that even possible? How does this even happen, right? This is the world we live in where some random person whom I have never met, never in a million years would get in front of in the middle of Australia, driving across the outback. Back, mate, right? <laughs> Whatever it might be, is binge listening to my podcast. And that's the opportunity we have. When you think about podcasts and why they have become so popular and why they are so important and why they are going to play such a big role with content marketing moving forward is very simply put, they are mobile. You don't need to be sitting at a desk to listen to a podcast. You don't even have to be in front of a computer. You can be out driving across the outback of Australia. You can be mowing the lawn. You can be walking your dog. You can be folding laundry. Whatever it is, podcasts are passive listening. You do that while you're doing something else. People love utilizing podcasts on their commute to work, while they're traveling, uh, while they're you know killing time, waiting for the kids at the park, while they're doing whatever it might be, they can have those earbuds in, those earphones on, listening to your content. And this is really where the opportunity lies with podcasting is understanding the depth and the quality of your podcast audience. This is really something unique and different than other forms of content. Maybe the best way to explain it is this. Imagine you every week for 30 minutes got to stand up in a room of 500 people, 500 people who literally were hanging on your every word for that 30 minutes, for that half hour. They couldn't get enough of it. And the next week, 600 people showed up. And the next week 700 people showed up and all of them there to listen to you talk well that's what podcasting is correct every single listener who goes through your podcast is like an audience member so when you see those download numbers go from one to five to ten to a hundred to five hundred to a thousand those are real people all over the world listening to your content your voice is literally in their head in their ears They are listening to you, and that builds such camaraderie, that builds such trust, that builds such a deeper level of intimacy than, say, written content, a blog post or something like that. Not that those are bad forms of content marketing, they're not, but podcasts have a unique ability to really build a close, intimate relationship with your audience. So when it comes to recording a podcast, it's actually very easy to do if you want to do it yourself. All you need is a microphone. I use a Blue Yeti mic. It's a USB mic, so it plugs right into my computer. And then I open up GarageBand. I'm a Mac guy. I hate PCs. I will never touch a PC if I can help it. But I'm in GarageBand. And so what I do is, you know, I've got these different sound areas. This is my little intro to the podcast. 
And then I put in little sound effects. And these are some of my favorite sound effects from movies and pop culture. So this one, Don't Call Me Shirley, that's from the movie Airplane. And, and you'll hear this in a second. ABC is from Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, where Alec Baldwin always be closing. And then another one where he says, put that coffee down. Uh, another one where a famous football coach, Mike Gundy from Oklahoma State, yells, come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. He was mad that they were criticizing his players in college. Uh, and then let me show you here. What I do is I've saved this right as a template. Uh, if you're familiar with GarageBand or sound editing platforms, once you put it in, it's done. And I use a song called My Way, which is a Los Only Boys song. It's got a great instrumental guitar riff. And the reason I'm showing you this is the intro, the opening to your podcast is really important. That can become the most popular feature, in fact, of your entire podcast. People really, really like a familiar introduction. If you think about talk radio and your favorite talk radio shows that you listen to in the car or on the way to work or whatever it is, don't they always have the same song to start it? Don't they always have the same introduction, the same funny sound clips? This, this applies also with podcasts. You want to do the same thing. So I never change my intro. It's always the same thing. It's these same sound effects. And I'll play it for you here in a minute. But it's basically the same intro. And then here at the top, I basically have a little thing called Nemo Audio. And I go in and I just record my podcast right there. And that way, when I'm done, I can make any edits. I can trim anything. If I have an interview, I will record the guest audio and put it in here. And then I just do a file export and off we go, right? Share, export the song to a disc. I upload it to a podcast network that I use. It pushes it out to all the different podcast uh, players, uh, you know, Apple and Google and everything else. And that's kind of the logistics, a quick and dirty look behind the scenes at how to create and produce a podcast. Now, I don't want to go too deep into the weeds on how the logistics of creating and recording a podcast work. There's plenty of separate trainings for that and courses for that, and the tools can change all the time. Here's what you need to know, just at a base level. You either want to outsource this, and there are people that will produce and create the whole podcast for you. All you have to do is record your audio, and they will edit it and put in fancy sound effects and do it all for you and upload it. Or you can do it all yourself and piece it together like I have using different tools like GarageBand on a Mac or Audello or some of these other tools and then finding a podcast provider software. There's tons of those out there that will push out your podcast to Apple and to Google and to these other you know, listening apps and things like that. So you decide up front based on your skill set, your time commitment, all those things. Do I want to try to do this myself, go out on my own and learn all these things, or do I just want to outsource it? Is my role simply just to record the audio, hand over that file to someone else, and it comes back as a polished show? And that's totally fine. Again, time is money. It depends on what you want to do, where your strengths are. As far as the format of a podcast episode, there are a few different styles you can utilize. When we're talking about business-themed podcasts, typically it's either going to be an interview-based show where you are the host and you bring in an expert to share his or her insight on a topic that your audience is interested in, or you do a solo episode where you simply come on and you teach and train and talk about you know a topic that's of interest to your audience. I do both and both work incredibly well. My big thing with it is don't feel like you're forced to stay really rigid and only do this format and only do it this way, those types of things. Be creative, be flexible, watch your statistics because also, with podcasting software, the beautiful thing about this is you will get measurables. This many people listened to this episode. This many people downloaded this episode. You will see, you'll see trends. Wow, this guest really got a lot more listeners, and this topic really seemed popular, whereas this other solo podcast on this topic really fell flat. So you'll be able to adjust. You'll be able to ask your audience, of course, through the podcast, through the one-question survey that I mentioned before, what are you interested in? What do you want to hear? What what do you want to know about? Now, without going too far back into all the previous modules in this section about how to create compelling content, when it comes to podcast episodes, a couple very simple reminders, simple tips. One is the quality and tone of your voice. You've got to have emotion and excitement and passion and energy and enthusiasm. If you're just kind of talking 
you know, like you talk to your wife about going to get milk at the store, right? People are not excited. Sorry. But if you're really excited and you just amp up the energy and the volume and I'm gesturing right now while I'm talking, uh, you know, my eyes are open, my face is open. It's almost like voice acting, really bringing out your voice, bringing out your passion into the microphone so that people respond to that emotionally as they listen. The other key element with the content of your podcast episodes is, of course, going back to what we've covered already in this training, is telling great stories. Always looking for, if this podcast episode's about this topic, what's a great anecdote or personal story I have to illustrate that topic? Your listeners love good stories. In fact, some of the most popular podcasts out there are podcasts like Serial, where that was a soap opera almost, episode to episode, they're telling you a true crime story. What's going to happen next? Who did it, right? We love stories. We love curiosity. So bring that into your podcast. Tell me great Great stories that also contain an important lesson. And when you're doing interviews, I get asked about this a lot. You know, when you're interviewing a guest or a podcast, it's always a good idea to write out some questions ahead of time, send those to your guest if they're willing to kind of say, here's the topics I want to talk about so you can prepare yourself. But don't get too married to your set of questions. Feel free to let it flow into a good conversation. Those are the best episodes. Those are the best interviews where you just talk. You talk, you get passionate, you share ideas, you pivot off something the other person said and go into a different direction. That's going to be valuable to your listeners. So again, when you create podcasts, always think in terms of what's in it for my listener. What will they get out of this topic or this episode? How will I engage them? Do I have a good story to illustrate this point? Or if I'm bringing this guest on, what would people want to know? What would be a win for my audience when they hear from that guest? And when it comes to publishing your podcast, when to make it live, when to alert people, and we'll talk more about this in the coming sections of this training, but I like the idea of always publishing your podcast on a regular schedule, meaning it comes out at a regular day and a regular time. So people are anticipating it. Oh, I know every Tuesday morning, John publishes a new episode of the podcast. I'll be ready. I'll be looking. I'll be hitting refresh on my podcast app. That's how you want to approach this is having consistency so people know when to expect your new episodes to come out. Frequency is totally up to you. Some people do a podcast every single day. Some people do one a week. Some people do just a couple a month. I have found a good rhythm of one or two shows per week. That really seems to work well. It doesn't overdo it. It's not too demanding. And it keeps you in front of your audience. Remember that room full of people hanging on your every word, it keeps you in front of them a few times a week where you're staying fresh, you're staying current, you're staying top of mind. And as far as branding your podcast, as far as what it should be about or what it should look like, you always want, in my opinion, you always want your podcast to really promote your personal brand. That means having your face on the cover art, having your name on the show, having you know your brand, your presence, your personality just oozing through the entire show, the title of it, the artwork, the name, the logo, right? This is an extension of you, of your personality, and you want to use utilize it as such. So one final assignment here as we finish up this video before you move on to the next one, think about a topic for your podcast. Think about in your mind, if you decide to do a podcast, what would be something your ideal audience would be interested in? What's a theme? What's a theme that you could really expand on? Keep it focused on something that your audience would love. What would they love tips on? What would they love insights on, strategies about? What's your expertise? Because once you create that theme, now the show and the episodes can flow out of it. You can start thinking of solo episodes where you explain certain strategies or tools or techniques or tips related to your theme or guests related to your theme, people who have expertise related to your theme. That's the key behind all of this is having an over overarching umbrella type theme to the show all right so i'm back on camera here's what i want to do now that we just finished that and i have more training coming in a second so don't go anywhere uh what would be if you if you already have a podcast tell me if you want to start a podcast what would be the theme or topic of your podcast if you were going to create one if you already have one type that in the chat like what would be the theme or the topic of your podcast. I'm very curious to hear, right? Okay. And people are asking questions. Uh, Farouk says, is it better to have an interview style 
or a series on a topic. It really depends on your audience, right? Like, and your personality, right? Um, and oh, Kurt says, do you have tips for getting people on as guests? Do I ever, Kurt? Yes, yes, I have all that. Um, basically, I want to know, connecting the dots between science and education, Melody, interesting. Tell me, too, who would be your target audience, right? So having a theme or a topic for your podcast is super important, right? So for Nemo Radio, if I look at mine, it's really about um, – let me actually look at see what I say. It's online sales, marketing, and motivation. Like that's my topic, and it's really niched for coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs. So you want to have an overarching topic. All right, so Mark says – Corporate expense reduction and sustainability. All right, interesting. Marsha, adventures in supply chain. Love it, right? Uh, good ethics is good business. Then if good ethics is good business, then what's the problem? Oh, interesting. Medical affairs audiences, PhD students. All right, for yours, Melody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Mark, target CEO, CFO, VP operations. Good, good, good. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some great topics here, right? Prospecting playbook, right? So that's a great one. Phil, target would be HR directors. Yeah, okay. Steven's got, oh, interesting. Drinking water treatment and managing. Kurt, all right. It will be financial planning. There you go. How to create your life. Oh, look at this. All right, Bruce is all over the PPP. <laughs> I like it. Um, and Farouk, to answer your question, like, it really depends on your topic. I like to mix both interview style and solo episodes. And here's why. Um, interviewing people is a great way to, to create good content, to keep it fresh, but also having a strategic plan of I'm bringing on people to interview for a specific selfish reason. Either I want to sell them as a client of mine after the podcast, or I want them to be a referral source. Or uh, as you're going to see in this next video, I will pick people to interview based on helping grow my podcast. So let me show you this video because this is one of the real tricks. There's tons of training about how to start a podcast and what equipment to use and how to put an episode together. But one of the things that people really struggle with is how do I grow it? Like, how do I get people to find out about me? How do I get people to learn about my podcast and subscribe and want to listen? So I'm going to show you a quick video um, to really understand how to grow a podcast. So that's the next video I want to dive into and let's keep the chat rolling. But now I want to talk about two of my favorite techniques to grow your podcast. And these aren't ones that you normally hear about or think about or see, but they're the most effective. So let's dive into how to really grow your podcast effectively. All right. People are saying no audio. Is that right? Can't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? I'm going to come back out. I'll do this live because I'm not afraid. <laughs> so just have yes in the comments if you can see and hear me. Okay. Um, and then I will dive back in and show you everything that I'm talking about. Okay. For some reason, that video, the sound didn't come through. Um, just have yes in the chat if you can hear me okay now and see. Otherwise, we could have issues. Um, I wonder why that didn't go through. Okay. People can hear me again. Okay. So what I'm going to do. I will share my screen and then I'll actually just take you through the lessons I was going to share with you. So, okay. So let me uh, just have, yes, if you can see my screen, I should be on the entrepreneur on fire page. Um, and then I'll show you kind of quickly what the two ways that I love to grow a podcast. So just type yes in the chat. If you can see my screen. Okay. I want to make sure that works. People are saying yes. Can see and hear you fine, not no audio on the video. Okay, so people are seeing it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so the number one best way to grow your podcast is to be on other people's podcast, <laughs> right? Like this is what I was getting at is this is when I was on the Entrepreneur on Fire podcast. And now people say, well, wait, wait, wait. How do you get on other people's podcasts? Okay, I have all that covered. I have an entire training session um, on how to become a guest. So booking yourself as a guest on podcasts, I've got a whole training with scripts and tips, how to get on the podcast. I'll talk about that later. That's inside the course. But here's the point. Getting on other people's podcasts is how to grow your own. And the reason it's so effective is think about it. Um, people are already on the platform. So if they're coming in and they already love podcasts or listening to Entrepreneur on Fire, how natural when you are a guest on someone else's podcast to be able to say during that call to action, well, how can people learn more about you, John? Oh, they can just go to NemoRadio.com. I've got my own podcast, right? And what happens is if someone hears you as a guest on 
a related podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire, or whatever it is, and they know that you have one, they will naturally want to follow you. We're always looking for good podcasts. So let me show you how to do this because this is really simple. So I'm in the Apple app. Um, just type yes if you can still see my screen since I'm switching things around. But basically, you can go in and you can look and see all the different podcasts. And there's a very easy way to find all your ideal leads. So let me show you. So make sure people are saying yes, I can still see the screen. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, is pull up. This is on my computer on desktop. Let's say I want to um, market my, I want to grow with business coaches. Like I want to get in front of business coaches and have them listen to my podcast. What I did here in the top left corner, it's kind of hard to see. I typed in business coaching in the Apple podcast directory and it immediately pulls up all these different podcasts that guess what? are aimed at business coaches, business coaching secrets, right? Here's one right here. Um, I can go and pitch myself as a guest for these podcasts, right? And they're all about business coaching and business coaches. They already have a built-in audience. My people are on these podcasts. I want to get in front of their audience and dazzle them as a guest and then have them come over and follow me on Nemo Radio. So all you have to do is type in your topic, right? Um, so maybe you want to be in front of consultants or maybe, you know, here's consulting success. Get yourself on there realizing this person already has an audience. They're already niched in to consultants. Pitch yourself as a guest and then uh, maybe it's entrepreneurs you want to be in front of, right? So then you can look and say, uh, type those search terms in entrepreneur on fire, right? Being the boss nine to forget the nine to five podcast. Like there's all these different shows and you don't have to just go for the big dogs. There's tons and tons of options, but once you get in as a guest, and again, I'll show you, uh, in the full training is where I can talk about, you know, the scripts and tips for pitching yourself as a guest, I've got like literally, you know, the copy and paste templates and emails of how to pitch yourself. Once you get on these shows, that's how you grow your podcast, right? That's a huge, huge win for you to be able to go in, get featured on someone else's show and then pivot people at the end. Hey, where can they go next? What do you want to do next? Oh, I've got a great show. It's called Nemo Radio, NemoRadio.com, whatever. They will follow you over to your show. So that's one great method. And I just want to make sure everything's working. Okay, good. Now, another great method, and I stole this. So I'm just going to give credit where credit is due. Pat Flynn, I stole this from him. This is a great idea he came up with using groups. Okay, so Facebook groups, LinkedIn professional groups. This is another great place to grow your podcast. And here's what I mean. You go into LinkedIn and let's say I want to search for business coaches. Again, I want to get in front of business coaches and have them listen to my podcast. So I type that into LinkedIn. And then a very simple thing I can do is filter the search by groups. So I click groups and you can see it's going to pull up about 1700 groups that are guess what? Business coaching related. This one has 19,000 members. This one has 3000 members. 3,600 members, right? So again, what I can do is join these groups and then interview the founder. So what I'll do is you can see this group was started by Connor, right? And uh, here's the deal, right? Helping coaches, trainers, whatever, increase revenue and do profit. He's got 3,600 members in the group. I can request to join. And then what I can do is say, hey, Connor, um, would love to join your group. Also, by the way, would love to feature you on my podcast. I would love to invite you uh, to come on as a guest on Nemo Radio. My target audience, you know, the people I want to speak to are coaches and consultants. And it looks like you've got a great, you know, group here on LinkedIn. You've obviously, you know, created quite a following. I would love to feature you on my podcast as a guest. And what happens is, if that person says yes and comes on as a guest, what's the first thing that they're going to do after the interview comes out? They're going to promote you. They're going to promote you in the group, right? There's 3,630 coaches in here. Now, imagine if the owner of the group gets featured on my show and comes in and goes, hey, everybody, check out the podcast I just did with one of our group members, John Nemo, right? Listen to the show here. You're instantly going to get people who are interested in business coaching flocking over to your podcast, signing up, subscribing. And by the way, 
there's thousands of groups to do this in, right? So again, if I go back, there's so many different places, you know, uh, all these different groups, women in coaching, right? I could go and say, I want to do a special episode for women in coaching. And I would like to interview, you know, the founder, uh, let's interview Kendall about, you know, what's your best advice for women in coaching? What's, what are your best thoughts? I know you have a really, you know, active LinkedIn group and it's a legitimate, valuable interview with insights where again, you're promoting Kendall and her and her business and her stories and her ideas. But again, it will come back the reciprocity. She's going to share it in the group. She's going to share it with these members and they will get pointed to your show. This is why having a podcast is so valuable because you can pick specific people to offer um, guest interviews to, right? You don't just have to willy-nilly go to anyone and everyone. This group has 19,000 business coaches. If I selectively went to Luke and said, hey, Luke, I just want you to promote my podcast to your group, he'd say no, right, or give me money. But if I said, hey, Luke, I want to interview you and feature you on my show, which is aimed at the audience that you've cultivated, I think it could be win-win for both of us. I'd love to promote you, tell your story, whatever you want to talk about, like, let's have a great conversation. And then even better, we can share it in the group, you know, and let people know about it, right? So this is a, a lesson I learned from Pat Flynn. You can do this on LinkedIn, you can do it on Facebook, but that's the idea, right? Is you can go in and find these groups, feature the owners or feature a member and have them share it in the group. So again, it's two great ways to do it. One is get on other people's podcasts. That works incredibly well. And then link, you know, or tell them to go over to yours. And this is the most effective because if you're on someone else's podcast, their audience already loves podcasts. They already know how to subscribe. There's no hurdles to overcome. They know they'll just add your show. They'll search for it, add it in their app, and they'll start collecting you like, you know, they collect all their other podcasts that they're interested in. The second method that works really well too is joining these groups and interviewing the owners. So there you go. I mean, these are really quick win kind of tips. And now I want to make sure before we run out of time, I answer questions for you. I do have a course, Podcast Powerhouse. I'm going to talk all about that in a second, but I want to make sure um, we answer some quick questions. Okay, so let me get in here. Uh, Juliet missed most of the presentation. Oh, Juliet, I was killing it. You you missed out. No, I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll work on a replay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So Karen says, how do you interview on the podcast? So we're going to into some of the logistics. I use Zoom, right? So I, I record Zoom. And the reason is I like when I'm doing a guest interview, I do it over Zoom. I do it as video because I can repurpose it. I can put it on YouTube. I can have a video interview, take out the audio, repurpose that as a podcast episode. And there you go. You get two for one. So I would recommend that, right? And that's part of what I'll share Um in the online course, the full course is actually, let me share that right now, how to nine X your episodes, right? So like one of the things, this is the podcast powerhouse page and I'll get you the offer here in a second, but like how to nine X each episode, like there's nine different ways you can repurpose one podcast episode. Okay. And so I'll talk all about that in a minute, but I wanted to just share that as an example as we're going through. Okay. Um, okay. Are you on, let's see here. Let me read a few other quick questions people have. Is it harder to get a yes on these podcasts when you're just getting started? Not necessarily, not necessarily. What I would recommend, if you're starting from scratch and you're using this model, is create a few episodes first that are either solo episodes or other interviews. Have your podcast already kind of going, right? Or, you know, have some examples you can give to someone so that if you're saying, hey, I'm starting a new podcast for business coaches, I've already got six episodes in the can. I'm just building it out before I launch it. Um, if you'd like to listen to some, I can give you a link so you know what the show feels like, et cetera. But it's not really necessarily an obstacle because again, depending on who you target, I mean, if you're going after the biggest name in business coaching, sure, it's going to be harder to get Tony Robbins than someone that just kind of has a, you know, a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group or a smaller podcast. But again, be strategic. And if you spread it around enough, you're going to find people especially in different areas, different niches, they're like, wow, no one ever wants to talk to me. This is kind of exciting. I, I would love to be featured, you know, like who doesn't want to be featured? So again, it's not that hard to get a yes. Um, people said, are you on multiple platforms? Yes. So one of the questions people have is, 
once you get the podcast going, and this is all in the training, but yes, use a platform. I use one called Spreaker. And basically you upload your episode to Spreaker and it spits it out to all of the different channels, Apple, Google, Amazon, uh, iHeart, whatever they all are. There's a million of them, right? But use one platform like Spreaker, upload the episode and it spits it out to everybody. So it's really easy. Um, all right. Yeah. Zoom. Yep. There you go. Uh, only a couple in your niche. Yeah. So depending on your niche, that can be, you know, again, think about your end goal. The other thing with a podcast is you can do it just for fun and it's a hobby, but also you should have a business objective. Am I going to use this for sales? Am I going to use this for lead generation? Am I just using it for personal branding, awareness, marketing? Am I using it to be kind of, you know, build myself up as a thought leader? Because you can do that, right? You can really create something where you can come in and get known in your space. Right. And that's not a bad thing. Um, let me show, let's see if we can find a good example here. Okay. So let me, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show an example quick of a podcast I did for a client for Katie Brinkley, where we really wanted to niche her at the time for Rocky mountain marketing. Right. And so here, um, we created a logo for her, Rocky Mountain Marketing, Small Business Secrets and Strategies. And Katie, at the time, was doing, um, she had an agency focused in the Rocky Mountain area, Denver, wanting to serve small businesses. So what does she do? She goes in and interviews, guess who? Small business owners in Denver, in the Rocky Mountains, right? Again, real estate, right? Talking about different things going into different topics, entrepreneurs, right? And again, as you go through, you're going to see, you know, she was picking people that we found on LinkedIn and saying, hey, I'd love to feature you on my podcast. You're a business owner in Denver. Can I feature you on my new podcast, Rocky Mountain Marketing? Let's talk about your business. Let's talk about what you've learned. Let's talk about how to optimize things, you know, whatever it is, whatever you want to see. And then what she's able to do is build a following of, guess what? Small business owners in Denver, in the Rocky Mountains, who may or may not need Katie's services, right? Social media consulting, et cetera. And then with each of these guests, we actually developed follow-up scripts where she could follow up with them either directly for a sale or basically, and I'll show you actually where that is. Um, and that's in the selling with your podcast, right? So how to follow up post interview with a lead. Like I literally will give you scripts like, and these are all in the course. Like here's what you email the person after you interview them as a guest. Here's what you send a couple of days later. And that works incredibly well, right? So you can kind of go in and figure out how do I follow up? How do I, you know, when you use this and you have guests, it's super important to follow up right? And have a method to your madness. And so now's as good a time as any Farouk and everybody else. I will go ahead and share this with everyone. Okay. So what I want to do is launch uh, the offer for podcast powerhouse. So let me do that. Um, get that pulled up. And then I also want to stay and answer questions too, for different people. So what I'm going to do, let me find the offer here for podcast powerhouse. This is an all new course. This is my 13th course. Hopefully that's lucky, right? <laughs> um, so I've got the offer live. Um, I will also put in a link to the checkout page and then I'll show you everything on it. Um, so let me do that. Uh, I will pop open a new window for everyone and I will put it in the chat. Um, here we go. Get the podcast course here. All right. So we got that open. Get the podcast course here. And then I'm going to share my screen with you as well. So you can see all that. Um, and again, I'm here right now live to answer questions, but I'll show you kind of what's inside podcast powerhouse. Cause the two lessons that we shared today, both the live lesson and then the, you know, about the engaging audio, that's all in the course. So this is the course. Here's what you're going to discover really kind of a step-by-step -step guide of how to actually podcast for profits. Like literally what pieces to put in place before you start to know what's the goal here? How am I going to monetize this? How am I going to have success, right? The fastest way to grow your podcast. Uh, those two tips I shared, plus other ones, how to really get people 
knowing and following and listening, how to 9x every episode, right? Tips and scripts for selling on your podcast. So either selling in an episode or selling the guests that you have on. I give you the actual words to use and say how to turn your guests into paying clients. This is one of my favorite methods. And I have a detailed walkthrough and scripts there. How to make it a referral engine. Again, this is why you want to have a podcast, right? How to pitch yourself as a guest, how to get on those big podcasts. And that alone, even if you don't start your own podcast, just knowing how to get featured as a guest on podcasts, that is so lucrative for your business, right? To be able to just to think about if I could get in front of all my ideal prospects through this one podcast where I get featured for 30 or 40 minutes as the expert talking about my topic, and then everyone can afterward go on and look at my stuff. That's very, very lucrative. And there's a very detailed module on that with what to put in your email, how to explain yourself, how to pitch yourself, how to find the right podcast. All these different things are in here. So Great news is this course is only two ninety seven. Okay, it is going up by a hundred dollars after this. So for those of you that are on live, this is your chance to get it live. Like this is your chance. You can get it live for just two ninety seven. Just one payment. You get lifetime access. It comes with a thirty day risk free money back guarantee. After this, the price is going up. So on the replay and everything else, it'll be up to three ninety seven. So still an insanely good value. If you think about everything you're going to discover, and honestly, I always look at the ROI. Like if I can get one new client out of this course, right? Is it worth it? Yeah, right. So you're going to get a ton of business out of this. 